Praise God. We're going to pray for Sister uh, Sylvia. Uh, she's been in the hospital for a couple of days with swelling. Uh, we're just going to go to the Lord in prayer for her before we even get started this morning. Dear Lord, we just come right now as we pray in agreement for Sister Sylvia. Um, she's been dealing with uh, an ailment that has her in the hospital, Lord, and we just come into you right now this morning, the Lord, asking you for your amazing grace, your mercy, your loving kindness, your gentleness, and your tender mercies. We come interceding for Sister Sylvia, God. Your word says by your stripes we are already healed. So, Lord, as we're standing on your word this morning, we stand that she's already healed in the name of Jesus. Touch her body. Touch her from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. Touch her, the Heavenly Father. Her, 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 her friend, Brother C, brought her uh, uh, up in prayer. We think about the, the, the four men who let down their friend into the presence of Jesus. And Lord, you, you healed them, Lord Jesus, right there. So, Lord, we, we ask him for that kind of healing. Make a miracle. God, you're a miracle worker. You can do more than any man can do. And then, Lord, you can you even use men to perform your miracles through medicine, through surgery, through, through just, just general care, God. And we thank you for this, and we praise you for it right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Oh, oh thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We, 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 we. We sense you moving right now on her body. And we give you all the praise and we give you all the honor. By your stripes, by your power, by your blood, she is healed in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Welcome everyone to the God and Light Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study Conference Call. This is your Sunday School Lesson Edition and I am your host and speaker, Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest E Church in Harvest, Alabama. Um, we had to start today's lesson off with prayer for uh, Sister Sylvia. Um, uh, Brother C brought it up, so we made sure that we lifted her up in prayer first and foremost this morning. We know that there's others out there that, that need prayer, so we're going to go right back into prayer as we start this morning. Um, dear Heavenly Father, we, we thank you and we praise you for uh, allowing us to see another day. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. It is a day we've never seen before and a day we'll never see again. And as always, God, we give you all of the praise and we give you all of the honor. And we give you all of the glory. You're worthy, God. You're worthy to be praised this morning. You're worthy, God. You're worthy. Time has changed according to man this day. We sprung up and went into a new time uh, with us uh, skipping forward to an hour, leaping forward. But Lord, our hearts are always skipping and leaping and going forward in you. So we ask you, Lord, this day that you just bless us. Bless us as only you can. Whatever we stand in the need of, Lord. Some of us stand in the need of financial blessings. Some stand in the need of relationship blessings. Some of us stand in the need to, to heal our family, heal our friends, heal our body, God. We, we, we know you can do all of that and more because nothing is impossible for you. And Lord, we just ask you right now to touch everyone on this line right now and touch those that are going to be listening to this recording later, that they might be blessed to know that you're an awesome God, you're an amazing God, you're a glorious God, and that they might come into the saving knowledge of your grace. Well, Lord, we just say to you right now, we confess that we have sinned and fallen short of your glory, but we know the Heavenly Father that your word says if we confess our sin, you are faithful and just to forgive us and then cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So, Lord, we're confessing. Have your way. You are the potter. We are the clay. 
mold us and shape us according to your will and your way. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Again, welcome everyone to the Guiding Light Ministry. Um, our Sunday school lesson today comes from Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, starting at verse 1, going all the way to verse 10. Um, the tag that we can put on this text uh, is um, by grace through faith, by grace through faith, by grace through faith. We're going to spend a lot of time this morning uh, uh, reading uh, the scripture. And, and, and the reason we're going to spend more time reading the scripture than, than just explaining it um, is we, we need to see this for ourselves in God's word. God's word, uh, especially this text, are, 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 are quintessential elements that, that we as Christians, we who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we who confess him as our Lord and Savior, need to understand. And the word speaks for itself. And so we're going to take time this morning and, and just kind of read various different translations as, we, as we're going through this lesson here. Because this, this right here, uh, uh, many, uh, many of people who, who claim that they love the Lord and, 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 and fall into this, into this abyss of their own self-righteousness. They fall into the abyss of thinking that they are saved by their works and by their performance. And, and if they don't perform right, they believe that they lose their salvation. And when you're when you dealing, dealing with people at that level and, you, and, and, and they're dealing with that, th those are just tricks of the devil to, 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 to make us feel guilty and, and, and to make us condemn ourselves when we're at a point where we fall short of God's glory, but praise be to God, hallelujah, because we, we, we all going to fall short of God's glory, but, but, but we are saved by his grace through faith in Jesus Christ, which means that, that we have forgiveness for our sins when we confess with our mouth that, that we have sinned and we repent of those sins and God will forgive us. And then after he forgives us, oh, hallelujah, it, it, it is our job then. To, to, to forgive ourselves. And, 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 and that's the hard part because every now and then, all those heinous sins that we have performed in our lifetime, the past will come back up to our memory. Whether it's by our own flesh that bring them up, our own lust that brings them back up, or whether it is the devil trying to play tricks on us. It ain't God, for sure. But all those things will come back up and then we'll start feeling guilty and condemned and, and, and trying to work our way through it. No, no, it's still the same thing. We got to confess. We got to open up our mouth. We got to say it. As long as we, you ain't doing that same thing again, you, 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 you need to say, Lord, you forgave me already. So I declare and decree over my life. I'm forgiven by your grace because I believe that's, that's where my faith is operating. And then you, 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 you watch how God works in that situation because when a, when a, when a man or a woman of God declare and decree something, whatever is loose on, uh, on, on earth will be loose in heaven. Whatever is, is bound on earth will be bound in heaven. So you can loose yourself and you can buy that spirit of guilt. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. If I don't say nothing else this morning, I think I've said more than enough to help someone understand that don't don't let that don't 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 let condemnation and guilt come on you. Don't don't get caught up in works trying to trying to fix your situation. It was the blood of Jesus on the cross that 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 that, that, that purged our sins away. I got up this morning. I said, Lord, what color I want? I want to put on. He said. Put on that burgundy shirt <laughs> for the two of them first. But that, that's the blood of Jesus. Yeah, that, that, that came streaming down. If, if it was not for the blood, oh, hallelujah, we would not be saved. Glory to God. So let's turn now. I'll, I'll have a New King James Version Bible in front of me. Uh, we're going to read uh, starting with verse uh, uh, 2, I mean verse 1 of Ephesians chapter 2. And we're going to read all the way down to 10. 
And this is how it reads out of the New King James Version of the Bible. And he made alive. And, and you he made alive. Who were dead in trespasses and sins. In which you once walked according to the course of this world. According to the princes of the power of the air. The spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we were once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and we were by nature children of wrath just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the age to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace. His kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace, you have been saved through faith. And that not of yourself, it is a gift of God. And not of works, lest any man should boast for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared before hand that we should walk in them oh glory hallelujah that's why I say this this word it, it speaks for itself we don't need a whole lot of explanation. This, this word speaks for itself. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 is our key verse. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And that's not of yourself. It is the gift of God. Our salvation. Our forgiveness of our sins does not come from any good works that we may do. Forgiveness, forgiveness is God's gift to us. Only God can forgive us and we must put our faith in Jesus and follow him. The key concept that we want to grab a hold of in this lesson. As we are saved by God's love. It's his love. I, 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 I get happy when I think about that. I was sinking deep in sin. Far from the peaceful shore. Very deeply stained within sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea, he heard my despair and cry, and from the waters he lifted me. Now safe am I. Love lifted me when nothing else would, could help. But love, oh hallelujah, love lifted me. We'll say, by God's love and his amazing amazing grace. So my keys for my kids this morning is number one, our, our salvation is a gift from God. Number two, God sent Jesus to save us from our sins. And number three, we cannot earn salvation. Only God's love and grace can save. And so as we look at this lesson, we're going to summarize first the learning facts. We're going to summarize the, the basis of salvation. And then we, the pr biblical principle is we're going to contrast salvation by works and salvation by grace. 
And, and thirdly, our daily application is to, to reflect the love of God in ministry and lifestyle that grows from being called to be a disciple. So let's look at let, let's look at this. The first part of our lesson, we're gonna look at our past life and and living death, if you will. That's verses one through two of Ephesians chapter two. We're gonna look at our future life and and exceeding riches. That's verses four through seven. And then we're gonna look at our current life. That's saved by faith, and that's verses eight through ten. Hallelujah. Let's look at a couple of words here. The word grace, the word grace is, 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 is God's special favor and kindness towards us. As I said earlier, it's a gift. It's a gift. No ifs, ands, and buts about it. And, and how do we get this gift of grace? We get it by faith. I mean, uh, we get it through faith. So by grace, through faith, we are saved. So, so what, what is faith? And that's to trust someone or something and believe and trust that, 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 that the Bible is true. Oh, hallelujah. So, so, so that's where we at. But now, 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 now catch this now. As a believer, you have to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And you have to follow him. That, that, that's your faith. That's, that's your belief. But in order for people to come to an understanding that they need God's grace, that they need to be, they need to believe, they first have to recognize that they're a sinner. And it shouldn't be hard to recognize that you are a sinner. What, what is sin? What, what, what is sin? What? What is sinners? Sinners are people who 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 break God's law. Real simple. And so to sin means that that, that you're breaking God's law. You you you're a wrongdoer. You got bad thoughts, or you got bad actions, or you got a combination of all that in one. And if you're walking around saying that you don't have any sin, you, you're lying to yourself. And that's a sin in and, of, in and of itself. We all fall short of the glory of God. Oftentimes people look at sin and, and they talk about little sins and big sins and, 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 and sins that are greater and sins that are lesser and, and all of that. But, but when God looks at sin, sin is even across the board. It's plain, it's black and white. You have broke my rule. You have mishandled my ways. You did not follow my path. You did not do what I asked you to do or designed for you to do. You have broken the law of God. You have fallen short. You have missed the mark. So, 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 if, if we get stuck in that, if we, 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 we get carried into to, to knowing that, that, that we have sinned and we can't find a solution to our sin and we just try to whitewash it or explain it away or give an alternative fact or put a spin on it, oh my goodness, that don't solve the situation. That only covers it up. Back in the day, people had picket fences, and we don't have them so much these days. And 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 these white picket fences would eventually get rotten out. And as the white picket fence got rotten out, you, you're really supposed to change the boards that's getting rotten out. But but what people would do instead of changing the boards since they couldn't afford the wood or the carpentry work, they would just paint over them with some more white paint. And and, and, and and so you would see pieces of wood that were rotten, but covered with white paint. And that's how our sins are when we don't take them to God. We, they, we're just rotten, covered 
with, 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 with something that, that make it don't look like it's so bad. But, but it's rotten on the inside. We have to realize that 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 we just can't cover up our sins like that. We have to come to Jesus. And so, in our first part of our lesson, we we look at the fact that 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 we have a past life. We have a life that 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 is full of sin, and and I'm gonna read it now. I'm gonna read verses one through three. Uh, uh, I got the amplified up, so it, it's it's gonna it's gonna really be blowed out. I mean, you know, the amplified gonna gonna really make this thing come come to life here. The amplified classic Bible says this about verses one and three, one through three. He says, "And you, he made alive, and when you were dead, slain by your trespasses and sins." And which at one time you walked habitually. You, 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 and you were following the course and the fashion of this world, were under the sway of the tendencies of this uh, present age, following the princes of the power of the air. You were obedient to you, you were obedient to you and under the control of of the demon spirit that still constantly works in the sons of disobedience. The careless, the rebellious, and the unbelieving who go against the purposes of God. Among those we as well as you once lived conducted ourselves in the passion of the flesh. Our behavior governed by our own corrupt and sensual nature. Obeying the impulses of the flesh and the thoughts of the mind. Our, our cravings dictated by our senses and our dark images. We were then by nature children of God's wrath. Heirs of his indignation like the rest of mankind. Boy, the Amplified Bible, that Amplified Bible fills that thing up. Letting us know that 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 that, that all of us have sinned and all of us have fallen short of the glory of God. All of us. By nature, we're children of wrath. We we were rebellious, and and, and and the best thing I could I can I could bring up into my mind, we were teenagers. <laughs> Boy, I don't know if you ever had to raise a teenager. Lord have mercy. You done trained up that child in the way that they should go and. Next thing you know, that joker would come to teenager, get to smelling themselves, acting a doggone fool, acting crazy, doing this and doing that, smelling they says. And then some of them even have a nerve, especially them boys. They get up and they throw a buck up, and they get to bucking up just out of rebellion. Shoot, I don't know about you. I know I can get some men online right now. My son bucked up to me. Next thing I know, I had him by the collar, choking him by the neck. Don't you ever buck up on me? <laughs> and the mothers, I, I got to talk about your daughters. Boy, they get to smelling themselves and bucking up and acting a fool. And, and mama, be happy. The mama just have to jap slap them. Bam! <laughs> Because we are nature, by nature children of disobedience. Children who deserve the wrath of God. That's what our past is all about. We were, we were basically walking dead people because we didn't know God. We didn't know the solution to our wayward nature. We didn't, we didn't have any way to, to deal with this old 
fleshly, lustful nature in us. And we just did what we wanted to do like we were in Burger King, having it our way. Having it our way is just disobedience to God. Because he got a way for us. He got a plan for us. He got a purpose for us. So we move to our next point. This is our future life. Which has exceeding riches. Verses 4 through 7. And this time I'm going to read 4 through 7. Out of the New Living Translation. Listen to verses 4 through 7 out of the Living Translation. But God is so rich in mercy and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you have been saved. For he raised us from the dead. From the dead. He raised us from the dead along with Christ and sits us with him in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. So God can point to us and all future ages as examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness towards us as soon as shown in all he has done for us who are united with Christ. Let me put all of that which I just read into a couple of words. Because of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we are covered in the blood. And when God looks at us, all he sees is his son, Jesus. He doesn't just see our unworthiness, our worthlessness, our sinful nature. But what he sees is the blood of Jesus covering our bodies, covering our souls. And he did this so that he could show the world that he's just not a God of wrath and judgment, but he's a God of love, of mercy, and grace. Hallelujah. That's why he loves us so. He's a God that he didn't, he didn't want any of us to die. He didn't want any of us to, 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 to go to hell. He didn't want any of us to receive his wrath. He wanted us to be his children. To walk like him. To talk like him. And receive all the blessings. I got to go back to the teenagers for a minute. When that child was first born, you saw that child in your arm and you said, oh, my beautiful child, my beautiful daughter, my beautiful son. And, and you taught that child and, and you loved on that child, you know, from one to nine, ten, you taught them, twelve, you taught them. And then 13, 14 rises up and that and that that that, that lustful uh, 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 spirit, that that rebellious spirit raised up in that child. You didn't stop loving that child. No matter how crazy they acted. But what did you wanted to do was still direct that child, train that child, and get that child to do what you need them to do. And thanks be to God when they get 20, 21, 22 years old, that rebellious spirit leaves, praise God, we hope. And then, and then they start acting right based on what you taught them, and based on how you done prayed for them. And, 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 and you get you stick out your chest. Boy, I know that y'all raise hell, but look at this child now. They're getting their education. They're working their jobs. They, they're starting their careers. They're starting their families. And you're proud of your children. 
Oh, you ain't forgot about that rebelliousness. But your love for them covers a multitude of sin. And that's what God's love for us does. Yes, we need to realize that because of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, we now sit in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. We have riches, exceeding riches of grace. We don't take grace for granted. We don't take grace to be cheap. Grace was expensive for God. He gave his only begotten son. But his grace is a gift to us. It's free of charge because Jesus paid it all. And all to him we owe. Oh, hallelujah. Now we're going to get to our past, our, our present, our last point, not past, last point. We done talked about our past life and, and we've talked about our future life because our future is exceedingly rich. We're we, we, we already in the spirit sitting in heaven with God, but in the future, we're going to be sitting in heaven right with Christ Jesus. But what's our current situation? Our current life. Our current life, we're still being saved by grace. Saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Before I read the scripture, the Lord is leading me to talk, talk about salvation. Salvation is a process. When we confess Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we are saved from the penalty of sin. We know the penalty of sin is death. So now we have eternal life because whosoever believes in him shall have eternal life. Saved from the penalty of sin. Then after we're saved from the penalty of sin, we call that salvation. We call that justification. Then you're going to get saved from the very power of sin. This particular part of salvation is what we call sanctification. And sanctification is the process that we go through now as saved children of God, that, that God cleans us up. We learn how to confess. We, instead of running from God, we run to God when we are falling short. When, when we're in trouble, we always, oh God, help me in the time of trouble. Yes, and he's the present help in the time of trouble. But then there are times when we have a rebellious spirit and we want to do it our way and we want to be arrogant. Those are the times where we, this sanctification period, we learn to call on God and, and that which we used to do, we don't do no more. That places we used to go, we don't go no more. The things we used to say, we don't say no more because God is sanctifying us, cleansing us, preparing us to be in heaven with him. And then the final one is we're saved from the very presence of sin. And the term that they use for that is glorification, meaning that when we get into heaven, we will be glorified just like Christ Jesus was glorified after his death, his burial, and his resurrection. And we won't even be in the very, the very presence of sin, will not exist anymore in our lives or even in heaven with us. Oh, hallelujah. So, so that's our future it's, it's, it's so exceedingly rich. Imagine, if you will, if you in the presence of God and there is no sin, that means there's no more sickness, no more dying, no more crying, no more sadness, no more tears, no more pains. Arthur, Arthur, Arthur won't bother your joints no more. Asthma won't bother your lungs no more. Emotional distress won't bother your brain no more. If you couldn't see, uh, you were blind here on earth, you, you could see. That's why when the songwriter says, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved the rest like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. 
Oh, hallelujah. And so our current life, verses 8 through 10, is this. For by grace you have been saved. And that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. We are saved. Glory, hallelujah, we are saved. We are saved. Thank you, God, for saving our soul. Thank you, Lord, for making us whole. How are we saved? Did we work for it? Oh, no. We are saved by grace and grace alone. Amazing grace. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Oh, it's because of his grace. His amazing gift. Through faith in Jesus Christ. So, when it comes to works, you don't work to be saved. You work because you are saved. And, and the work that you ought to be doing is whatever God tells you to do with your hands. If you don't put your hands to what God is telling you to do, then you have sin. You need to ask him for mercy. But don't think that because you're doing something with your hands, that's going to give you more grace and more mercy. No, that's God's grace. That's his mercy. He gives it to whom he wants to give. He shows favor to whom he wants to show favor. And I'm telling you, and I'll say this, I've heard it said, but and I know it to be true, favor don't never seem fair. Why does God bless one person better than the other? That's his faith. He can do it. But don't be looking and comparing your blessings with everybody else's blessings. Or your lack of blessings with everybody else's blessings. Because that ain't how grace works. Thank God for the grace that you have. So I could hear the songwriter. In that song, Amazing Grace, when he ends, he says, if I had 10,000 tongues, I couldn't praise you enough. And down here in Alabama, we, we end that song, we add another verse to Amazing Grace. We just start singing, praise God, praise God, praise God. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. That we just started singing praise to him because when you start thinking about his amazing grace, yes, how sweet the sound that saved a rich like me. You can't do nothing but give him praise, praise God. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. That's where we ought to walk in. Because of his amazing grace, we ought to walk around with praise. On our lips, praise in our life, praise, because he has saved us by grace through faith. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. As we in this lesson, let me make a few conclusions and we have a close in prayer. Before God's love made a way for us to be saved, forgiven, we were dead in our sins. But God loved us so much that he sent Jesus to die on the cross for the sins of this whole world. We cannot work to get salvation and be forgiven. Salvation, forgiveness is a gift of God because he loves us. If we accept and put all 
our faith in Jesus, we can be saved, forgiven. Let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for loving us. We praise you for making a way for us to be saved. Forgive us of our sins. And by your grace, your kindness, your tender mercy, your, your favor, we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Before we leave, I always like to pray the prayer of salvation with those who are online before I close this recording. And we're just going to do it real simple this morning. We, are, we heard we are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. So all we're going to do is confess Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and accept this free gift. Let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we confess you as our Savior and our Lord. We believe you died on the cross for our sins and that God raised you from the dead. Please forgive us of our sins and come into our heart and save us by your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer and you truly believe it in your heart, you are now saved. I encourage you to find a fellowship of Bible-believing, Bible-living Jesus followers and give your life to them and to him in their presence that you might join that fellowship and have a place where you can grow in God's grace and then learn to do the works that God has called you to do. Be blessed and as always be a blessing. This is the Guiding Light Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study Conference called the Sunday School Lesson Edition. And I am your host, Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest Sea Church in Harvest, Alabama. Have a blessed Sunday and a blessed rest of the week. Goodbye on Facebook.